Hmm, something looks a little different here. No fret marker holes. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good out there. I'm doing great. I'm going to explain a little bit of what I did to the Guitar Kit World guitar neck. But first, I want to show you guys a little bit of an unboxing here of some stuff that I picked up. And uh, that's going to help me along with working on this kit guitar and achieve the artwork that I want to get done on the neck. So first off, stopped over at Menards, picked up a bunch of Dremel tools because I am going to need them. So first off, multi-purpose cutting kit for Dremels. This thing is really good. I've got two of these uh, in the cabinet. They're old. They're real old. The bad thing about these is they're made out of plastic and I suspect yeah, this one is going to be made out of the same thing. Uh, the problem with these things here is the adjustment lock on the side, the screw over here that's spring loaded. Uh, it breaks, it strips the, the top of it. So you have to use a pair of vice grips to kind of loosen it up to be able to move the Dremel up and down. And what you do is you remove the threaded piece that is at the tip of the Dremel, not the chuck part of it, and it screws right into this. And then it comes with a couple of little routing bits, you know, kind of like a roto zip where you can cut holes in walls and shit like that. This works out pretty good, but I also picked up something else that I just ordered on eBay, which is for doing scroll work and stuff like that for with the Dremel. Um, it's more precision. You can see more of what's going on in the area that you're working on. This one here, you got a little window here and a smaller window right here. Kind of hard to see. You get a shadowing and it's, yeah. So then I picked up a shitload of Dremel bits. And here is a, uh, a 1 8 router bit. And this is going to be, I think, probably the smallest bit that I've got here. So I'm going to be doing some really fine detail work with this neck. And I wish I could find like a, a, a one millimeter, which I think I did in a kit, but I have to look at it um, much closer of uh, what actually it is. So what I have here is a pointed one, which is another cutting bit. And this is for carving and engraving. Uh, can also use it on wood. This has got a little bit of a point on it. Very, very small. Okay, very small. Like again, detail work. Now I picked up a few of them just in case just in case one breaks, because that does happen, you know. And, uh, all right, so I got a couple of those. Uh, a couple of different sizes of the carving. And uh, now these have almost like a thread going on them. Um, this one is very, very small, again, for a little detail work. But they're almost like a thread so when they spin it's it's almost like a regular drill bit but they're not spaced apart and there isn't any wide grooves between the threads the threads are your cutting surface that you're going to be using um again here's another one that is a pointed uh here's another one that is just like the one i just showed you another pointed one uh, this is another one eighth, and this one is another one eighth Dremel. So, as you can see, I'm going to be doing some kind of fine detail work here. Now, and this bag here is something that's also going to help with this build and other things that I have in mind. I just picked up kind of like a, um, I don't know what you would call it. it, it it's it's kind of like a hobby kit for epoxy resins. It comes with molds and stuff. I just picked that up. I got a project that I want to do with uh, me and my daughter. And, uh, you know, this stuff is going to also help with that as well. So what this is, which is probably something I should have used a long time ago, especially when I was doing the glow-in-the-dark stuff. All right, so this is a kit where they're all neon colors all glow in the dark and uh, this is what they call um, an alcohol based liquid 
All right, so when you mix this with the epoxy resin, uh, it's not going to interfere with how the epoxy is going to dry. Anything that's water-based um, will affect the drying time of epoxy resin, and it needs to evaporate the water before it actually cures. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. And I've been using the epoxy resins for a while now. I'm kind of getting used to it. I also have another dye kit, which is are just solid colors, nothing special with them. Uh, I also want to try these dyes on just... Um, since they are a liquid, they're not really, really heavy and really thick. Try these with a, um, actually like using it as a dye on the body of a guitar. So say if I use, you know, the orange and kind of dilute it a little bit with water, even though it's alcohol based, it'll still mix with water. Dilute it a little bit and use it as a dye and then hit it with the black light. I'm going to test that out to see how that works and then see if there's any, um, you know, using a rag or something to wipe it on, if there's any left on the surface of the wood that will possibly glow. So you remember the liquid glass that I ended up picking up, all right? Now this is for a two to four inch thick pour. This stuff is more of a watered down type of a epoxy kit. So if you're doing like two to four inch deep uh, gouges or something like that that uh, is going to be a deep pour just like it says uh, or thick pour um, this stuff will be really good as far as uh, curing and everything else the bubbles and stuff um, because this mixes and it mixes thin not to water consistent but close to it it'll end up uh, letting the bubbles come through the surface a lot easier without having to torch it and a lot of the bubbles won't get trapped on the inside. This also takes a longer time to dry, but once it comes out, um, like it says, liquid glass over here, the finished product is just right, that. So I've got another box here. And uh, again, this is gonna help me with my building. I think I got the box upside down, which more likely I probably do. glued together look it is Christmas time right the rip shit open oops yep upside down all right so what this is is a premium epoxy made by ultra and this is a clear epoxy it's for tabletops, bar tops, and stuff like that. Now, this has got a thicker consistency in both parts, A and B. you got an equal amount that you mix. The other one I showed you, um, oh, God, I can't remember if it's like a two-to-one mixture or something like that. Uh, two of the resin, uh, one part of the hardener. But this is a equal amount, so you would be mixing you know, two equal amounts before you mix the both together. This is a ultra-clear epoxy as well. And... Uh, this is more for what I'm doing as far as like inlays or, you know, tops of the guitars. Excuse me. A little bit of burp. Uh, this will work out just like the same stuff that I was using before. Now, I've been kind of hunting down a little bit of a uh, better than what I was using before. The, the stuff I was using before worked out pretty good. It worked out really nice. It gave me the results. And I'm not disappointed in the results that it gave me. But I've been kind of looking for other epoxy resins that can give me the same results. Um, maybe a little bit less of a drying time, maybe, if that makes sense. And, uh, yeah. So this also is, is this UV? I think this is also like a UV resistant a little bit so it's not going to you know sunlight is not going to bother it you know who leaves their guitars out in the sun anyways so let me put this stuff away and uh, i will show you what i'm doing with the neck all right so i've been kind of working a little bit on the neck trying to figure out what a design i want to put into the neck goes and i've been kind of struggling with it because it's like when you when you're when when you're an artist okay and i used to draw i used to do cartooning i used to do um airbrushing uh there's a lot of stuff i used to do as far as drawing goes and when you've drawn a lot of stuff it, it seems to be a little bit hard to come up with an idea especially in something with that's as narrow as this is to come up with an idea that'll fit in the area um 
that you're working with. And this was no different. So I was struggling trying to figure out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And, you know, I started looking at the, um, the snake that is on the snake pit guitar. It's like, you know, that is kind of cool, but what if it's done differently? What if it has more of a goth look to it? Uh, more of the, uh, kind of like the tribal flame look. Um, so I came up with this. So I got the head portion done of it as far as sketching it out and you know, sketching it out with a pencil and then going over it with a pen. And it seems like the black pen doesn't want to draw on this uh, mess. This tape that I have on here is about a foot wide and in a huge roll and you can roll it out and it even has a little bit of a stretching technique to it to where you can stretch it over gas tanks of motorcycles you can stretch it over a fender and you can use it as kind of like a stencil to where um you could draw on it with a pencil kind of lightly trim out the areas that you want to remove and then use the masking as a stencil leaving the exposed area for the paint to uh you know adhere to now this here, I'm going to be using it in a different way. I'm going to leave the mask on here, sketch out what I'm trying to get as far as the artwork goes. Um, it's kind of, I want to kind of go down a little bit and make it go a wrap a little bit and then go down kind of like what the uh, snake pick guitar is, but in a tribal look. So you can kind of make out that yeah, it did look kind of looks like a snake. Um, it was a little bit difficult to... Um, figure out you know it's like okay i like how this looks but how am i going to do it so whatever color that i end up doing the body of the guitar as far as the top goes because it's a uh flame maple i haven't I, flame or maple or it's a quilted maple so i haven't figured out yet what the top is that's what the inlay is going to be but i'm going to do it in one of these uh the pigments that are glow in the dark and see how that turns out but i want to get it to close to what the body is there's two different blues inside here and uh yeah again like i said i want to try to test out that pigment to see if it can also be used as say a wood stain as well and give me a little bit of a result as far as a glowing on the body of the guitar and i'm thinking about doing something like this um a little bit smaller on the armrest area of the body as well Let's see how it works. Right now, it's an idea. Um, I've got the bits to start this off with. I want to hunt down to see if I could find some smaller bits. Um, again, just got some nice points to it, and it's really fine detail. And I think the the biggest bit that I got the uh, the one eighth, which is like a three point two millimeter, um, will fill in this whole area. But as it gets to the points, I'm going to have to use a different bit for that. That's why I got these pointed, thinner pointed uh, bits. Just so I can make that a little bit sharper of a point than what it looks like. I could leave it rounded and go that route as well. Um, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the CNC machines that are out there that are doing... Well, I was a CNC. I can't remember. It was a CNC or, or something else. Uh, whatever a lot of the machines that other guys are using and stuff like that sometimes they change bits for different sizes um but they still don't come out to have real sharp points i want to have real sharp points with this and again you know i'm going to go down the neck with it and uh you know see how that works so i'm going to start working on this a little bit um i do have some other stuff coming that is for a dremel again this thing here is really nice as far as uh you know working on flat surfaces and stuff like that even if it's got a little bit of a curve to it like this neck has a 12 inch radius in it it works pretty good but again you got a lot of shadowing going on inside here because there's no light on the dremel to see your area that you're working with and follow these lines that's why i have a white tape with dark as far as the outlines go so i can see a little bit better but i think i'm going to wait for the other tool to come in that goes on the dremel uh and then finish off drawing this get some ideas of what i want to do with the body maybe do the same thing on the body that i have here and uh yeah so maybe it might look too like too much on the body with having something similar to this or exactly the same thing like this but just having the body of the snake wrap a certain way uh might look a little bit too much between the body of the guitar and the neck i don't know we'll see oh that's my cue you guys take care and have a good one and I'll catch up with you later.